Hi, Mike Swanson here. I just put together a video uh, for you about the stock market I'm going to show you in just a second. I know I haven't done any videos about the market for you now in a couple months, and uh, it isn't that I've been out of town. I know a lot of you probably have taken trips um, in June and July and, and August for vacation, but I have actually uh, haven't gone anywhere. Uh, in fact, what I've been doing is, is uh, working on an investment book uh, for you that should be out by the end of August or early September, and I'll let you know about that when it happens. Uh, but I think the last time I actually did a video for you about the stock market was back in May uh, when I went to the Bahamas and visited with uh, Dave Skarika. And uh, that was when the market just started turning lower, and uh, we had that day uh, where the Dow was down a thousand points. Uh, inner day and then reversed uh, before the close and, and took back most of those losses. And uh, those are real dramatic uh, things that were going at the time is when the Greek debt crisis was all over the news. And then we saw the market trade up a little bit and uh, you know put on an attempt to rally which failed. And then it rolled over and declined into July. And since then, uh, we've been having this rally for I think it's five weeks now. As you can see from this chart, the S&P 500, we've been seeing a nice summer rally in the stock market uh, since uh, July. And a lot of people, you know, it's bringing, making people feel better now about, about stocks and getting more interested in, in buying things. In fact, uh, many think that what we're actually witnessing now is the start of a brand new bull run that's going to take the market up to new highs and basically higher for the rest of the year. Uh, one of the reasons they think this is because last year we saw a correction in May, June, and July for the broad market averages and then a bottom beginning in July just like we saw this July and then a move higher like we're seeing now and they know that you know after that move higher the market basically kept going up the rest of the year so they're pretty hopeful the same thing is going to happen. And they see as a uh, things to back up that belief that the Fed is dedicated to printing more money to help the economy out if necessary and they just you know see reasons to be excited. Now what we need to do though is put this move that we're seeing the past six weeks in context of what's really going on in the big picture of the uh, stock market. And that's what people really have a tough time doing because I get constant emails every single day about oh you know what's happening right now in the stock market uh, the market might be up one day and then people you know want to buy something tomorrow the market's down they get scared and so forth so they focus on the short-term trends what they hear on television and don't put anything in a real context of what's really happening well if you recall on January 1st, I released my 2010 stock market forecast, which I said that the big straight up move we saw in the market last year since March was over. And that in 2010, what we'd see is the stock market goes sideways for six to eight months. This is a direct quote from that stock market forecast. I said the stock market goes sideways six to eight months. It would then either break out and go on another huge tear for a few months or it would roll over and begin another another bear market and the idea of a new big run would be similar to what we saw happen in 2004 in 2003 we saw the stock market have a nice big rally after a bear market bottom peak out and then go sideways till August then break out and that's another thing people are thinking that maybe that's what we're seeing happen now um, Bottom line, though, is whatever you think, it's undeniable that the stock market has um, gone sideways. And you have to always put in context the big picture of the stock market with what I call stage analysis. Markets either consolidating, going sideways, it's in a bull phase, a topping phase, a bear stage four decline. One of these four things is what's going on. And you can easily identify what's happening by looking at the market and its relationship with the 150 and 200 day moving average, 
whether it's trading above that moving average, that moving average is acting as a support, or the opposite is uh, occurring, or you're going sideways, you know, one way or the other. Well, what's definitely going on is that the moving averages have flattened out and are going sideways, just as the stock market is going sideways also. And this purple line above and below, these are the 200-day Bollinger Bands, which act as long-term support and resistance in a sideways market. And once the market breaks out above its upper 200-day Bollinger Band or below its 200-day lower Bollinger Band, then the next trend of bear bull will be set. And I actually think uh, that we're in a bear market. I think this is the top. And I've been telling premium members that and basically telling people to, to use the rallies to lighten up on positions. Although at the moment I do think, you know, we can see the July rally continue a little bit uh, higher from here. But you may disagree with my view here. You may be saying, no way this is a bear market. I don't want to, or you may be saying, I don't want to hear that. You know, I'm getting lots of feedback from people that are angry that I'm getting negative on the stock market. But even if you disagree, the, the key thing, though, is the market's going to prove things out one way or the other. And I believe that we're going to see the breakdown or the breakout occur sometime in the September, October, November time period. And what should happen is this, or what will happen, I'm fairly convinced, actually, is this rally is going to end, and we're going to see the stock market pull back, come down, and, and test the, the low of July and the 1,000 support level in S&P 500. Why do I say that? Well, a couple of reasons. There's, the volume has been pathetic on this rally, and there's been a real lack of participation. Uh, the NASDAQ stocks are lagging uh, badly. Take a look at Intel, Google, Microsoft. These are stocks that reported good earnings in July, and they're going nowhere. And uh, the sectors that have led the rally are not the sectors that held up the best during the correction, during the decline. And normally, that's what you see happen in a bear market rally. In a bull market rally, it's the sectors that hold up the best that tend to lead. That's not happening right now. So that makes me think that this rally is going to peak out this month. And it could happen at any moment. And when it does, we're going to see a retest of, of the July lows. Now, here's the thing, though. If the bulls are correct and a breakout uh, above the, the uh, May highs is coming, which if it happened, I would think, yeah, you know, we are going to get another nice big run. Well, if that's going to happen, what will happen is on that retest, on that next pullback, uh, sectors and stocks as a whole will hold up better than the market averages. And you'll see lots of positive divergences hold. And then on that next rally, you'll see the broad participation. You'll see the sectors that have held up the best during that next uh, correction be the ones that perform the best on the next rally. You'll see those things occur, and then we'll know, hey, the bull theories are correct, and we'll be able to, you know, I'll be telling you to position yourself accordingly. Now, if that's not what happens, and the stock market goes through the S&P 1000 level, breaks through this 200-day Bollinger Band, uh, and, and we go lower, then the bear market will break wide open and just tear people alive, much like we saw occur in uh, fall of 2008. So what do you take from this? Um, right now, there's no sense in trying to buy and hold anything. Uh, wait, if you're bullish, wait for the next correction. So buying now on the long side is only for the real expert who is basically day trading, getting in and out, and, and, and is committed to doing that and can take profits quickly and is willing to cut their losses. And the truth is the average investor does not fit either one of those two categories. They don't have the discipline to do it. So that's why I say for the average person listening to this, there's no sense buying and holding. And really the only people that are really going to even try to do that 
at this point is the pure trading addict. And those are the kind of people that tend to buy at tops and, and lose lots of money. And I'm really putting this out there more as a warning for you to be real patient right now and uh, wait uh, before you buy stocks. Wait to things are in a good position. The risk awards just aren't there. I mean, you're basically hoping that the stock market can, you know, break out of its August high. And if it does, I mean, the upside is like the S&P 500 going to 1150 at the most and probably peaking out at 1130 to 1145 or something. So it's just not great upside when you're looking at a downside of, of at least double that, you know, and probably much more. And if you're bullish, you know, wait, you know, wait for things to come. Wait, you know, wait till you buy stocks on a discounted price. And uh, I'll be monitoring the situation, what's going on the market, keeping you updated. And I'll be talking to you later.